Welcome to the You Are the Universe podcast. I'm your host, Victoria Haffer, intuitive healer and holistic life and body coach with over 20 years of facilitating massive transformation for people and animals. And I'm so glad you're here. Today's topic is 11 ways to strengthen and clear your energy and biofield. So if you are a regular uh, student or client of mine or even listener, you know that one of the most important tools and probably the first tool that I teach my clients is how to clear your energy. So whether you are a, 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 a super empath, a psychic empath, a highly sensitive person or all of the above are not so sensitive. We are all electrical beings. And we are, if you want to think of it as the a metaphor of, of a sponge, right? Like we're just, we're this open field of energy co-mingling with energy and frequency all over the place. So energy can travel it doesn't have to be within the vicinity of you and your body. It could be someone could connect to you from across the country. Have you ever had a situation where you were thinking of someone, suddenly they popped into your mind, and then maybe they shot you an email, a text, or they called you? Yes. So again, energy is, there's no bounds to it. So, so many of us, and especially if you do identify as being a, what we call an empath, Right, we're all are empathic and have the ability to, you know, have empathy in um, all aspects of our life. However, there are a certain number of people who are extremely sensitive to other people's energies. So, if that is you, I highly recommend you continue to listen to this podcast. So, we're here today. I'm I'm here to share with you eleven ways to strengthen and clear your energy and biofield. So simple, simple, simple things. You could just pick one of these things and choose to do them on a regular basis. So the first one is number one is water. Water. Our bodies are made up of two thirds water. And so there's lots of different ways that you can clear your energetic field. Certainly swimming in the ocean, being near the ocean. Now, years ago, I actually lived right on the water and just by being in that space of um, the negative ions that were actually produced by the ocean keeps your mood in check. Also, so if you're not near the ocean, uh, you can soak in a salt water bath. So salt, sea salt, Himalayan salt. Yes, they all have great qualities of being able to transmute negative frequencies in your field. And I want you to just get a visual of this. So you have your physical body and then right outside your physical body, typically about three, um, three to six inches out is your emotional body. So that's where our, our emotions can be stored, stuck, stagnant emotions that we haven't, you know, since the inception of time, uh, since we were born, even before that, um, it can sit in there as well. Anything that hasn't been processed and really anything that we've ever experienced in our entire life sits in the field. And then about three to six inches out from there, we have the mental body and then the spiritual body and uh, the, the field. And I'm just keeping it very simple, but the field, and then, then the, 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 the outer layer is known as the scientific term is known as the biofield. You might know it as the, the electromagnetic field, the auric field, your aura, your protective bubble, any of those things. Yeah. So back to number one, water, sea salt. So ocean is my number one choice. But if you're like me and you're almost three hours away from the ocean, that is not something I'm going to be able to take part in on a daily basis. So the next step would be shower or the bath. The bath is great. You can put your almost your entire body into the water and you can put in some um, baking soda. And I highly recommend that you look for um, an organic brand, not, not Arm & Hammer. And sea salt or Himalayan salt 
as well as you can also add some high quality therapeutic grade essential oils to the bath. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we move forward. If you don't have a bath, you can also do a sea salt scrub before or while you're taking a shower. So every morning as part of my ritual, I actually do what is called a white light shower. And so as you put your body underneath that, the shower head, just imagine that it's just washing away from all aspects, all of your subtle bodies, and it's just clearing out any lower level frequencies or stagnation that might be sitting in the field. Another thing that I do, and again, these are all different. You don't have to do all of these. There are many options here. And really, it's for you to just listen and feel and see like, yeah, that's doable. That's something I do on a daily basis. And that would feel light for me. So choose that. Uh, cold showers. So cold showers also have the ability to clear away negativity in the auric field. They assist in removing toxins, improving circulation. And they help to draw attention from your body. I personally take an ice cold shower every single day. So the re results have been amazing. Okay, number two, sage or and Palo Santo, the smudge stick. Sage and or Palo Santo. My, I prefer the Palo Santo. And again, this is just a preference that I have. Sometimes sage for me can be a little too smoky. So the smoke from the white sage is known by the North American Indians to be very cleansing. Um, of the sages, I do like the white sage, uh, but as I mentioned, Palo Santo, Palo Santo is my go-to to clear lower level frequencies that I may sense in my home or around me when I feel a little bit off, especially after I work with clients, whether it be on the computer or in person. So sage has actually been scientifically proven to emit negative ions, which literally will transform and uh, de debunk uh, bacteria in the air. So it's pretty cool. So uh, anyway, simple, but not always so simple. Often in situations where you might be in social situations, smoky sage or Palo Santo is not going to be your go-to. Number three. Let nature and the sun feed your energy field, also known as what we call sun or forest bathing. Lots of sunshine is known to feed and expand our auric field. Spending time outside in nature amongst the trees, the flower, and the plant spirits is incredibly healthy for your body, mind, and soul. Being out in nature fuels you with energy, positivity, also, you get you can get in, in 20 minutes a day without sunscreen and without sunglasses will give you the amount of vitamin D that you need. Um, yeah. So also, it helps to ground you as well. This is also one of my favorite tools to use to ground when I'm in that space of overthinking, overanalyzing, overprocessing, and I'm just too heady. So getting out into nature and just really receive from the sun and from the trees. Number four, Reiki or any other energy healing, quantum healing that you might do, just calling in, you can Reiki yourself. If you don't, if you're not attuned to any of those healing modalities, no worries. Just call in your spirit team of the light, right? You might know, you might not know what that even means, your spirit team of the light. We all have a spirit team that we has been working with us since we were born. They have been assigned to us, guardian angels. Uh, if you're really connected to animals, you have a power animal. If you're connected to dragons, you have a guardian dragon, um, your ancestors, as well as loved ones who have crossed over that are supporting you in your healing you know, journey in this lifetime. So just call them in. Even if you don't know what it is, just call them in. Spirit team in the light, I ask that you clear away this whatever, whatever that feeling that you're feeling, this icky feeling, this negative um, energy I'm feeling, I'm holding on to something. Often it can happen you know, when you've been around other people that also may have a lot of 
lower level frequency energy and suddenly it rub, rubs off on you. Number five, super easy, super simple, dry body brushing. Now you can use a brush, but you don't have to. Literally, let's just take a moment right now. It'll take us five seconds and just take your right hand to your left shoulder and then just swipe your hand all the way down, touch your body and swipe it all the way to your fingertips and then kind of flick it off. Yeah. And then do the other arm, do the same thing and then go up around your head. And especially there's actually a portal in the back of your neck, right? A, a very specific portal and just clear that off, clear down the front of your throat, down the front of your torso down your back, you know, your kidney area, and then go down the legs all the way down, front and back of the legs, all the way down to the feet and just flick it off. And maybe you do that one or two more times, just kind of organically go with the process and just see intuitively how it feels for you. Super quick, super easy. Number six, sound frequency and or mantra. So music, Sound frequencies. Sound is recognized by many ancient cultures as a powerful healing tool. High vibrational creative frequencies can literally change the energy in the space that you're in. It can literally change the energy of your physical body and your emotional body and so on. The sound from Tibetan singing bowls and crystal bowls are well known for their ability to dissolve negativity and clean your energy fields. Listening to their sounds before going to sleep is a really great, nice, powerful way to clear your energy from the day, as well as mantra or chanting. They're really two different things, but because they're under sound frequency, I'd put them together here. So alternately chanting the sound of OM or any other high vibrational mantra that you're working with is an incredibly fast and efficient way to shift stuck, stagnant, or negative energy from your aura and your physical body. Number seven, crystals. Crystals have been used for thousands of years for healing and protection. Some of my favorite crystals to use for clearing are selenite, it's a whitish crystal, black tourmaline, fluorite, tends to be like purpley and green color, and labradorite, also one of my favorites. Labradorite has been shown by Carillion photography to actually heal tears in the auric field. So how do we get tears in the auric field? So basically, anytime we engage in lower level frequency activities or lash out, get angry, lose your power. You're, it's literally like you're flicking your power. And as the energy leaves your, your auric field, your electromagnetic field, it literally creates a slice in the field. Now that allows for things to come into your field that you don't invite, as well as your own precious energy to leak out. It could be one of the reasons why you're always tired or feeling exhausted. Labradorite is dubbed the healer's stone and is widely used as protection by body workers, teachers, healers, and healthcare practitioners. Any of these great crystals can be worn as a bracelet or a pendant or even a ring. Number eight, reduce your exposure to electrical stuff. Your computer, your smartwatch, your cell phone, AKA as EMFs, electromagnetic fields that are just kind of pulsing at us all over, especially since the rollout of 5G, right? All these frequencies are kind of coming at us. We are electrical beings. And so the radiation and frequencies which are emitted from our electrical gadgets can interfere with our body's own natural rhythms, cycles, and well-being. Spending too long at close range to these man-made frequencies can build up static in your auric field and cause major disturbances, not only in you, but also in your pets. I absolutely believe that this is one of the reasons why we have seen an epidemic 
of chronic anxiety and behavioral issues in our animals, cats, dogs, horses. So I suggest, I invite you to make your bedroom a priority to be as electrical free as possible. I never bring my phone into, uh, into the bedroom with me at night. Charge all your gadgets away from your bedroom and absolutely away from your head when sleeping. Number nine, essential oils. These are oh, so great. Essential oils, uh, really important. Make sure that your oils are high quality, therapeutic grade, 30, third party tested. You know, just because you're not ingesting them doesn't mean that you're not ingesting them. If you're, if you're aromatherapying in your space, it, you know, you, you, if you've ever walked by a house, um, maybe walking your dogs or just taking a walk outside with someone who's using Tide for breeze, you know, detergent or the, um, the dryer sheets, you can smell it. That is coming. That is just so that stuff is so toxic. So make sure you're using high quality essential oils, a diffuser. Um, you can definitely put, um, uh, you know, you can put them on your body neat, depending you've, you've got to do your research. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of things that you want to take a look at to see what is appropriate, especially if you do have animals, especially if you cats and uh, parrots can be very sensitive to essential oils. So just do your due diligence and research. So my favorite, some of my favorite essential oils that will support you in clearing your energy, frankincense, myrrh, sage, Palo Santo, and vetiver. A few drops applied to your belly button at night will help you from taking on too much of other people's junk in the space, on the astral realm. <laughs> uh, vetiva is very grounding and particularly balancing when not feeling grounded after a long session in front of your phone or your computer screen. Yes. Number 10, flower essences. Flower essences are, are another powerful healing tool just in itself, again, for people and animals. And some of the common ones, there's actually many, many. And so you may want to, again, do some research, do some muscle testing. And if you don't know how to muscle test, I will be talking a little bit about that in a future episode. So stay tuned, muscle testing to see which flower essence is best for you. And the thing I love about flower essences is you can't overdo it. You can't, um, you can't, you just can't. It's the essence of the flower that is put in the, the solution. So it's typically put in a few drops in water, or you can actually put it on your body as well. And number 11, the last Way to clear your energy and strengthen your biofield. Be mindful of people and places that drain your energy. And yes, my friends, this includes your coworkers, your friends, your family, and even your partner. So just, you know, being mindful, being present, and just noticing that, you know, on days that you feel you're on the top of the world, you're feeling very, you know, healthy and balanced and in a state of homeostasis. And then when you do the thing, it could be taking part in um, a behavior or an activity or a person, being around a person and just notice. And also space can hold energy. The land can hold a negative frequency as well. So just notice, and obviously, if you consistently notice that there's certain people or places that consistently leave you feeling zapped or exhausted, you want to limit yourself or cut it off to these situations, right? And, it, and at the very least, clear your energy immediately after the experience. So let's do a quick review of the 11 ways to strengthen and clear your energy and biofield. Number one, water and sea salt. Number two, sage and or Palo Santo. Number three, nature and sunshine. Number four, 
Reiki or an energy healing technique that you might be attuned to and calling in your spirit team of the light. Number five, dry body clearing. Number six, sound, music, frequency, mantra. Number seven, crystals. Number eight, reduce your exposure to EMFs. Number nine, essential oils. Number 10, flower essences. And number 11, being mindful of who and where you spend your precious time. Now, take a moment and just see which one or two of these actually stood out for you. And, you know, so if, for example, if you're like, oh, I really like essential oils and frankincense is your go-to, you could literally get a, uh, an essential oil roller of frankincense and then put it in your purse. And that way you have it with you all the time. Uh, flower essences are easy like that as well. Remember the sound brushing. Maybe you're like, oh, I think I'm going to go and explore, go to your local crystal shop or new age shop and maybe pick up a crystal or two to work with. So pick a tool and then commit to doing it every single day. I will tell you that when I start working with my clients, especially if you consider yourself a high level, highly sensitive empath, I have them put on, I would highly recommend that you put on your phone a reminder that pops up literally every hour. Have you cleared your energy? Have you cleared your energy? I'm telling you, you, the majority of the stuff that you're holding onto isn't even yours. So when you get into, when you cultivate a habit of clearing your energy on a regular basis, not just daily, but multiple times a day, you'll actually start to feel that you feel more like yourself. And then you'll be noticing, you know, we can ask yourself this, is this even mine? Return to sender with consciousness. So pick a tool, commit to doing it. I highly recommend that you clear your energy every morning and every night, at least. That's the minimal. So think about this. You're sleeping all night. You're literally, you think you're dreaming, but you're actually traveling on the astral plane. When you are in, when we're in the astral plane, there is a possibility of us picking up stagnant, lower level frequencies and even entities. So in the morning, again, a white light shower. If you take a shower every morning, that's an easy no brainer way to, you could um, do five minutes of chanting mantra before you get up. And then before you go to sleep, you could have a crystal bowl or a singing bowl next to your bed. And also I actually have some Palo Santo next to my bed. So before I go to bed, I literally take a few minutes and I call my spirit team in and I say, please clear any lower level frequencies or energies that are not supporting me, that don't need to be here. Big breath in, big breath out. And I just kind of, you know, put the Palo Santo all around me. I ding my crystal bowl, my singing bowl, or even tuning forks I use as well. And then I go to sleep. So I hope you enjoyed this. I would love to hear from you and know that I'm here to support you. If you need support or would like uh, perhaps guidance or a mentor on your spiritual journey, I am your gal. Feel free to reach out. Also, it would mean the world to me if you haven't already, if you would follow me, right, that's how you subscribe. I think on if you're on Spotify or on the Apple, um, whatever platform you're using that you follow me. And then right next to that, there's a little bell. And if you click that little bell, that would actually ensure that you get notifications every time I create a new podcast, it comes right to your doorstep. So I hope you enjoyed it. I love you very much and remember to be and see the magic in everyday life.